just received a Google package via mail. Let's check it out in our test lab. Look how beautifully this package sits on the table. Very beautiful. This is a video AI machine with four modes. Very nice. VO 3.1's shaping up to be a real burner. Prompts are flying, fingers are dancing across the keyboard, and each browser tab is running a different video job. This is the kind of AI workflow that's genuinely exciting. Let's go deep and even deeper. VO 3.1 isn't just a text to video tool anymore. It now comes with three powerful additions. Image to video, references to video, and start end frame to video. For this test, I went straight for the main model, not the fast version, because I wanted to see what peak quality looks like. Side effects, plenty. Let's just say this might be the most expensive tutorial I've ever made, because even with highly refined prompts and detailed preparation, things still break especially when you're not just asking for something like a dog runs from left to right, but expect physically coherent animation as well. When that fails, it's back to square one. I see this tutorial as a showcase, a way to illustrate what each of the new features can do. For each one, with the exception of references to video, I've picked a sparring partner, another AI video platform that's reasonably strong in the same category. And as always, I'll wrap things up with a few reflections on where video AI is heading and what I've learned in the process, especially with VO 3.1. Let's start right away with references to video. The results I got from VO 3.1 were genuinely impressive. A completely different league compared to what I've seen from Kling 1.6 elements or Seadance like references, which is why Google's feature gets its own dedicated spot here. What we're looking at Three examples, each built around a concise prompt and a set of three distinct reference images. Example one, a basketball, a lazy bear, and a court. That's all it takes. The prompt describes how the bear, without turning around, casually tosses the ball backward toward the hoop, then lifts his paw in a lazy salute. The idea is simple, the ingredients work, but the physics, still the biggest challenge especially with balls, flight paths and object interactions remain difficult territory. Example two, a bike, a moody teenager and a ghost ship. This one hits the mark. The result follows exactly the visual structure and timing ChatGPT and I laid out in our internal guidelines. There are a few soft spots, sure, but VO 3.1 delivers a beautifully framed result with the right mood, light and emotion. It just works. Example three, a ship, a castle, and a rugged coastline. The original idea was to depict a full-scale attack, the defenders in the fortress, the attackers arriving by sea. But the system flagged that as too intense, so all we get is the hovercraft calmly approaching. Visually though, the result still works. The scene is balanced, clean, and well composed. Next up is a comparison with what's still my favorite platform so far. Seadance Pro. The focus this time is image to video. And unlike Sora 2, which still feels cautious in this category, VO 3.1 goes all in and delivers results that are nearly flawless. Seadance Pro tries to keep up, but uh, let's be honest, VO 3.1 is in a league of its own. All scenes are based on start images generated in mid journey, paired with relatively short prompts. Example 4 The Desert Walker a steel behemoth marching through the sands, accompanied by a lone scout. What stands out are the details. The machine breathes, turns, puffs. Tiny gears rotate. Little clouds of smoke pulse from hidden vents. Veo 3.1 captures that inner life. Seadance Pro gives a strong overall result, but it doesn't dig as deep into the detail work. Example 5. A wild spectacle. Hunter and hunted. The roles seem clear at first glance, but with the right prompt, you can shift the narrative. And once again, the human becomes the dominant figure. VO 3.1 doesn't entirely agree with that hierarchy and lets its own avatar, a kind of tree creature, push back. The implementation here is near perfect, almost too smooth to criticize. Example six, gray skies, but a raised glass. Some people count raindrops. Others are just glad they've got something to do. 
Space to Think. Both platforms deliver strong results for this one. VO 3.1 edges ahead, thanks to integrated voice and slightly richer camera presence. But Seadance Pro holds its ground. No shame in that. If you want to guide a video AI platform deliberately, without getting lost in long prompts, you need start and end frames. VO 3.1 delivers on that too. The challenger in this segment is Kling 2.1. If you take the time to fine tune the end frame before starting the generation process, for instance, by anchoring certain visual elements from the opening image, you'll have a much easier time. All examples here are based on two mid journey images and relatively short prompts. Example 7. This comes from a scene built around a small stone dwelling embedded into a hillside. To help the AI understand what the interior should look like, I placed part of that space into the end frame itself. That made the spatial logic much clearer. VO 3.1 handled the figure walking into the building with real finesse. Kling, on the other hand, got visibly confused. Wait, how do I get rid of the person now? Not quite the result I was hoping for. Example 8. A dramatic setup. A drone captures the marching columns of a massive army. The end frame forces the camera into a sharp tilt downward to bring one of the commanders into view. VO 3.1 outperforms Kling 2.1, here in sharpness and detail. Interestingly, the reverse setup, starting close on the figure and pulling back to reveal the scale, didn't work nearly as well. Example 9. I recently watched a documentary about Amsterdam's rise as a global trading hub in the 17th century. The images I created in Midjourney were inspired by that. Even on their own, the lighting and perspective were striking. But once motion and sound were layered in, the scene came to life in a way that felt truly cinematic. Once again, Veo 3.1 starts doing what it does best, turning prompts into atmosphere. And finally, the head-to-head -head between the two top contenders in the text-to-video space, Google's Veo and OpenAI's Sora. This is arguably the most demanding discipline in AI video. Every word counts, every phrase becomes part of the scene. Without image references to guide the system, you rely entirely on how well the model interprets your wording. It's powerful and unpredictable. Example 10. The scene. A white stag in a fog-drenched forest at dawn. What made this work wasn't just the setting, but the subtlety. The texture of the fur, the way the animal pauses and watches, the curiosity in its body language, and the cold air backlit by pale morning light. VO 3.1 turns it into something close to a nature documentary. Sora 2, by contrast, freezes. Its version feels more like a statue than a living creature. Example 11. Ever been stuck in traffic, or blocked in by someone who parked just a little too close? That's the setup here. A man returns from shopping, arms full of bags, only to find his car trapped. No one around, no way out. And so, with a sigh and a shrug, he grabs the offending car and hurls it out of the way. The tone is playful, not violent. A superhero moment with a grocery list. Please don't try this at home. The final scene of this tutorial takes us to a street food alley in East Asia. Friends gathered around warm bowls and shared stories. A heavy downpour begins, but no one moves. The neon lights reflect in the puddles. Steam rises from the food, and something in the moment holds. VO 3.1 handles it beautifully. Sora, again, struggles with motion. And by the end, you're not entirely sure whether those are raindrops or rice noodles falling from the sky. That was a quick update on the current state of video AI. Right now, Google is setting the tempo, and everyone else is listening. But is it all perfect? Of course not. So here are six lessons I've pulled from these recent tests, or at least a few thoughts on what works, what doesn't, and where things are still getting weird. Lesson one, censorship. Or as the system likes to phrase it, waiting for your correct input. Unlike Sora 2, which refuses to generate human faces in image to video mode at all, VO 3.1 is a little more generous. But the moment you ask for anything that feels remotely cinematic in terms of action, explosions, collisions, collapse, debris, wreckage, ignition, it pulls the emergency brake 
and that's a problem because it removes an entire axis of storytelling. Meanwhile, self-censorship, not really a thing. VO 3.1 will happily output a perfectly rendered vehicle, complete with an unmistakable logo from a global car brand. Lesson 2. Physics, or rather the absence of it. You start wondering where the ball's even going anymore, and not just with VO. Honestly, it's an issue across almost every platform. There's a moment when you want to yell, you have no idea what you're doing, do you? Balls morph, teleport, clone themselves, bounce sideways or fold in half mid-air. It's not just surreal, it's physically incoherent. Lesson 3. Sound. This one's a reminder of how much audio shapes a scene. Until now, I've always done my sound design manually in a separate editing step. Music, voice and effects carefully balanced across scenes. But VO's built-in audio is starting to get genuinely helpful. Those details take time to get right by hand. If the platform can deliver them automatically, that's a win. My husband spends all day outside just watching the raindrops fall. Cheers. Lesson four, the prompt. Every tiny adjustment has an immediate effect, for better or worse. And when things don't turn out the way you hoped, you can watch your budget evaporate one failed render at a time. Even if the text has been fine-tuned by ChatGPT, Claude or Gemini, sharpened down to its last comma, the moment it hits the video engine, all bets are off. It's not just frustrating, it's counterproductive. Lesson five, draft mode isn't optional, it's essential. If the platform misinterprets your scene and you've paid full price for a final render, You've just burned time, money, and momentum. With systems like VO 3.1 or Sora 2 charging this much per run, experimentation stops being fun. You start thinking less in creative terms and more in damage control. Lesson 6. If you think you've earned yourself a quiet day as a content creator, you're wrong. Somewhere out there, another team is already preparing the next surprise update, the next small shift the next big jump. So forget sleep. The moment you pause, the tempo picks up again. And instead of counting sheep, you find yourself reciting names. Midjourney, Luma, Vio and ChatGPT, Claude, Runway, Sora and Perplexity, Higgsfield, Sea Dance, Wan and Hilo, Nano Banana, Sea Dream, Deep Seek and Pixverse, Eleven Labs, Suno, Mirage. That's it for this tutorial. Kling. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank Leonardo you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.